right now at 6, meeting now in session. The Uvalde City Council reviewing ways to improve security. We'll go over the big proposal coming from the mayor. Bear County lending a hand. How homeowners can get help on paying property taxes. But we begin with an alert now at 6. Three people vanished and police need your help finding them. San Antonio police are searching for these three people who've gone missing in the last few weeks, including a teenage girl. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Isis Romero. Tonight we're learning more about where these people were last seen. Ken's 5 reporter Vanessa Croy has the latest on how you can help find them. Well, we don't know a lot about how or why these three people disappear. San Antonio police haven't released a lot of details about the investigations, but tonight they're asking for your help in finding these three people, including a 13 year old girl missing for nearly three weeks. Police say Marissa Ann Marie Herney was last seen on July 27th off the 9700 block of Presa Street on the city's far southeast side. The 13 year old who may go by the nickname Mus or Momo has brown hair dyed red and police say she had a black shirt and black sweatpants with a Nightmare Before Christmas logo on them when she was last seen. Also missing Nicholas Patrick Brown, who police say may also use the last name Felt. They say the 35 year old man has a diagnosed medical condition that needs a doctor's care. Brown was last seen on August 3rd in a northwest side neighborhood off the 9400 block of Powhatan Drive. Investigators say his head is shaved and he has a U.S. Marine Corps tattoo on his right forearm. And today we've learned a 73 year old woman vanished last Thursday from the 2000 block of Fredericksburg Road near Woodlawn Lake Park. Francis Bowling, who police say goes by the nickname Frankie, has a medical condition. She's around 5'2 and 130 pounds. We posted pictures on our website of all three of these missing people. If you have any information about them or know where they are tonight, you're asked to call San Antonio Police Missing Persons Unit. That number is 210-207-7660. You can see it at the bottom of your screen right now. Reporting near downtown, Vanessa Croy, Ken's 5. Thank you, Vanessa. Happening right now, the City Council of Uvalde is continuing discussions on the school shooting. A City Council meeting is beginning right now at 6 o'clock. On the agenda tonight, the organization of a Rob School Memorial Committee and the mayor's proposal of an assistant chief of police. If the proposal is passed, whoever takes that position would fill in if the chief is unavailable. That's what happened on the day of the school shooting. Lieutenant Mariano Pargas led the force as Chief Daniel Rodriguez was out of town. After investigations, the legislature reported Pargas set up an ineffective command post. He was then placed on administrative leave. In the current chain of command, there are three lieutenants who may be assigned to act as chief if the actual chief is unavailable. Ken's Five reporter Matt Houston is in Inside the meeting right now, he'll break down what happens coming up tonight at 10. Meantime, state lawmakers from both sides of the aisle are asking Governor Abbott to call a special session to vote on new school safety laws. In the meantime, lawmakers held a joint hearing yesterday on the importance of detecting mental health issues and the need for more mental health professionals and programs in Texas. They also talked about reporting online threats. The next legislative session is set to begin in January. Help is available for property taxes and mortgages. Bear County leaders say they are cutting down $45 million owed in delinquent property taxes. Ken's Five reporter Troy Kless breaks down how you can qualify. Inside the Bear County Tax Assessor Collector's Office, staff are busy helping families. We're trying to get as much money to our uh, citizens that are still suffering uh, from consequences of the pandemic. Albert Uresti says that applies to more than 1,700 households in Bear County who applied and were accepted for the state's Homeowners Assistance Fund. Uresti provided the update on the program to county commissioners Tuesday morning for a program that provides grants that don't need to be paid back. You can have up to 25000 in delinquent property taxes and up to $65,000 in mortgage, so a home could conceivably receive up to $90,000 in assistance. For about 40 to 60 percent of people helped so far, the tax office says it's doing more than just helping people apply. We'll walk them from beginning to end. A lot of people don't even have a... Um, 
don't even have an email, so we're creating emails for them. We're kind of going way beyond that, you know, what we need to do because we want to make sure that our citizens get all the help that they can possibly get. So far, $11 million has been paid into the $45 million owed. The county says its role is to facilitate getting the money straight to the lenders or to the county. It's not a county program, but we adopt it because it helps with our mission of helping keep families in their homes. Homeowners can apply in person or online at kens5.com. In downtown, Troy Kless, Kens 5. A Houston nurse is being charged with six counts of murder after a fiery crash in California. Nicole Linton made her first court appearance this week after being released from the hospital. Prosecutors say Linton was driving 90 miles per hour when she ran a red light and crashed into several cars in a crowded Los Angeles intersection. Among the six victims was a 23 year old woman who was eight and a half months pregnant her unborn child and her son, who was about to celebrate his first birthday. Linton was also charged with vehicular manslaughter. If convicted, she could face up to life in prison. The Remain in Mexico policy is now over. Homeland Security says it ended the Trump era immigration rule yesterday. That came just hours after a judge lifted an order saying it had to be reinstated. The policy forced asylum seekers to wait for their immigration hearings outside the U.S. Critics said it exposed migrants to extreme violence in Mexico. Homeland Security says the program is ending in a quick and orderly manner. Alana Sarabia joins us now with a check on traffic. Alana? All right, if you're going to be downtown, expect some delays. This has been going on for about an hour. We had an accident. Now it's a stalled vehicle at I-35. This is southbound at Martin Street. You can see you can, at least starting at, let's see, a little south from Fort Sam Houston. It's going to be about 15, 20 minutes before you get in and out of that traffic. Now moving a little north. Also on I-35, opposite direction, northbound, we have an accident at Eisenhower Road. This accident is blocking the exit ramp, so if you're going to be in that area, just take the exit beforehand. Easy. Thank you, Alana. A rise in heat-related calls, the reminder from medical experts before you walk away from your vehicle.